For those of you who have already seen this video, uh, or one just like it, I deleted it. Um, it was really windy outside and I didn't realize it until after I had uploaded it that it was bad. Um, so this will just be kind of a redo of the engine bay video, just going to kind of go over some basics and show you where things are and what's going on and all that good stuff. So we'll start over on our right side, up at the top. This is a reservoir for the brake master cylinder. Um, as you can see, the hose just kind of runs down and goes to the main reservoir for the master cylinder. This is kind of like Ford and their radiators. Um, it's all in one bottle up top. So you just kind of go over here if you need to add anything or if you need to check it. This is where you check it. Of course, you have your normal size battery, thank God, with your little green, um, I wouldn't call it a light, but indicator to tell you, hey, this battery is okay. If that goes dark, that means your battery is uh, losing its charge or one of the cells is going bad or whatever you want to call it. Over here with this little fuse looking thing on it and a thing that says the owner's manual is the fuse box. It's just got all kinds of fun little things in it. Things you probably won't ever really have to mess with. If I can get the cover back on. There we go. Um, of course, and with most Fords, or all Fords since a certain year, you have everything labeled in yellow that's going to be important. So your washer bottle is over here where you need to add your windshield washer fluid. Um, this is your air box, of course. It's held in by these four hexagonal screw things, which I am not really a fan of. Actually, I took this off the other day. It's one. It's a fairly common one, so I mean, it's not not really that difficult. Um, and moving over this way, we have the dipstick for the oil, which is thank God made of metal. I can't stand when you get in a new car and they're made out of plastic. I know it's a small niggly thing, but still, I mean, really, it goes in the engine. It should be made out of metal. Of course you have your oil. Um, this is where you would add oil, of course. You don't check the oil from here. You can check your blow-by from up here, but do, do not you just look over here and check your oil because it's, it's not going to do you much good. Um, go ahead. And this is kind of a different one that I'm used to. It kind of goes halfway and clicks down. I'm used to the Honda ones where you just keep turning and turning and turning. But in any case, um, over here you have your reservoir for the radiator. That's all good stuff. Remember, don't open it when it's hot, okay? That would not be good. And this is a weird configuration to me because I'm used to everything over here being on this side. Basically, I'm used to the exhaust being at the front and the uh, intake being at the back. But it's not really that much different. Um, you have your alternator up top. Man, that was hot. Of course, there is no power steering pump in this vehicle because it does have electric power steering. Down there is your air conditioning compressor course which runs all your air conditioning fun stuff to keep you nice and cool on a hot day like this you can see all the coolant um, hoses running up and down around there uh, one thing I will note of course you probably already noticed this is that the uh, intake runners here these are composite as are the um, valve cover here and the cover for the camshafts and the belt or the cam gear in the belt, these are all composite. These are not metal. If you knock on them, not metal. Okay, uh, just just a note. And of course, it is an aluminum head and aluminum block. No more iron stuff. A little interesting looking motor mount over here. Um, let's just go ahead and take a look over here to where the sticker is. I don't know if that's really going to tell you anything. I don't think it really will. Not like the camera is going to focus, anyways. Just a note that these cars do not have timing chains, okay? These do have timing belts. It's a 150,000 mile change interval though, so it's not like you're gonna have to worry about it that often. It's not a 60,000 mile interval. One of my friends had an Aveo and had to change its timing belt at 60,000 miles. I thought that was shitty. But again, belt driven, not chain driven, so you do have to change this guy. And of course, off the top of the engines, you have your spark plugs, or the wires at least. Just standard stuff, nothing too exciting. And actually, they're pretty accessible. I don't know if you can see that. Probably not, because this camera isn't great. But the spark plug is literally, I can touch it with my finger. So it, it's not like with my Civic, where I used to have to have like an extension a foot long to get the spark plugs out. It was ridiculous. I'm making sure this thing's tight in here. Yeah, it is. Other than those things, of course, you have your positive crankcase ventilation feeding back into the air intake. Um, let's go ahead and take a look back here. 
back here, uh, of course, this big old silver thing in your view is the exhaust manifold. That runs down to the muffler, which is back there. And this white thing that's in the way is an oxygen sensor. There's also another oxygen sensor right there with the orange cord attached to it. I don't know if there's any more than that. There might be. This little silver bar running here, that is part of the steering system. That is actually the half shaft or I don't know, CV shaft or axle shaft or whatever the hell you want to call it. Connects to the wheel and that's how you steer your vehicle. You can see it going to the other side over here and you can see it going to this side over here where the boots are. Just kind of an interesting thing. You can see the steering system. I don't know if you can see this well right there. That's coming from the column and going straight down there. I guess that's where the electric power steering is housed. Other than that, you have your manual transmission with the barcode on it right there. Not that that really tells you anything. That actually is the IB5 transmission, or a version of it, that's been used since 1976, but of course heavily revised. Of course they wouldn't use the same thing all these years. And of course this is the Ford, I think it's Sigma. Well, it was the Ford Sigma, I, I believe, and now it's Duratec, of course. T-I-V-C-T, whatever. You can see your Motorcraft oil filter sticking out the front which I think that's a great spot because if you get up underneath the car like you're gonna go change the oil your oil filter is right there so she's easy to get to uh, and just kind of a look underneath here how exciting and it looks like it's so your oil pan right there it's so different under here from Honda's and of course, back there is your rear main seal where the transmission and engine come together. Oh lord. <clears throat> well that was interesting. Well, other than that, I think this has been a bit of a better video, if not longer. You all are going to get tired of hearing me talk. This has been the engine bay of the 2012 Fiesta. Thanks guys.